the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In today's Gospel reading, we read about the temptation of our Lord. And though this is a form of temptation that can be difficult for us to fully comprehend, we should know that Jesus was tempted as we are, yet without sin. We, on the other hand, are tempted and sin. We sin when we give in to our temptation, and we sin in our hearts when we desire to do what is evil, or neglect to do what is good. Regrettably, many will teach that as long as we don't act on our temptations, we are innocent, and that we are essentially morally neutral beings. But this is not true, for God's word forbids coveting. To covet means to strongly desire and are the secret sins of the heart, particularly to do with greed, hatred, lust, and all kinds of pride and selfishness. Easily explained, the fact that we have the desire to do evil is in and of itself evil to want to sin is sin consider for example our lord's warning against sexual immorality where he says that anyone who even looks at another person lustfully has already committed adultery in the heart or how anyone who hates another person is a murderer. When we are tempted to sin, we sin because we have a desire to sin. This is not so with Christ. Because unlike us, he does not have a desire to sin. Jesus is sinless. He is perfect good and holy. His temptation and his suffering was of a different and more profound kind. Although he is almighty God, he is still able to sympathize with our weaknesses, having been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Although he is God, he suffered for us, 
freely taking upon himself the sin of the world while bearing with our evil. Although he is God, he came into his own creation, and though we did not receive him, he was crucified for our sins, suffering the full wrath of God that we deserve. Christ overcame temptation for us. He defeated sin, death, and the devil for us. And he has crowned us with his righteousness, given us life, and adopted us. Our Lord is not a stranger to temptation. He is able to search our hearts and he knows our sins. And although he is our judge, he is our redeemer and friend. And he promises that you are forgiven, set free and holy. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.